Hello everyone, I am Binsu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today in this session, we are basically going to understand how we can create a separate material library in ANSYS Workbench. So for that purpose, what we are going to do, I am having an IGS file of an assembly. We will import that assembly file and then we will add the materials for the different components. Okay. Uh, in order to do that, uh, let us begin with the addition of material library. So first what I will do, if you see towards my left side, in my toolbox I am having analysis systems. So I am not going to use that. We will be using this when we are going to do any type of analysis. So let me just scroll down. I will be working on the mechanical model. Okay, so I will just double click on mechanical model. And uh, right now, let us not uh, add the materials in the engineering data. Let us first import that IGS file into ANSYS Workbench. So, what I will do, I will select the geometry cell, right click, and go to import geometry, go to browse. So, I have saved that file in desktop. So, here under adding materials, yeah, this is my IGS file. So, select it and click on open. Okay, so now let us open the IGS file in the design modeler and see what is the assembly we are having. So what I will do, I will right click here once again, click on edit geometry in design modeler. So it will take some time to open the design modeler. So what actually we are going to do is that uh, we will be first uh, looking at the assembly that we are having okay and we will see whether all the components are properly named or not yeah so here we are having uh, we are coming to design modeler now what you can see is uh, it has been imported but it is not visible right now over here so i'll just click on generate here So we have a benchwise assembly over here. Okay, so let me just uh, make the view uh, more clear. Right now it looks transparent. So go to view, click on frozen body transparency. Let us uncheck this. So this is the assembly that we are having. Okay, so it is having around 16 parts. Okay, so I will also just show you what is the uh, assembly that uh, names of each and every components. So I'm having another file. So these are the different names which we have. We have screw, we are having spindle, screw, knob, handle, slider guide, slider, space. First thing what we are going to do is we are going to name this each and every components as per the name that is given to us. Okay. Now there is a significance of that. This will play its role when we are trying to select a particular component and adding the material to it. So what I will do now I will open design modeler so let me select the first solid body here so when i select the first solid body you are actually not knowing what is actually happening right so let me just rotate this yeah and we will go at the bottom side so here you see the first solid when i select it is getting highlighted in yellow color similarly when i select the second solid it's getting highlighted in yellow color so so initial all sets are basically my screw okay so what I will do, I will select solid first and press shift and select up to this solid. Okay. And we also have this screw over here. So press shift again and select this. So all the solids are basically my screw. So what I will do, I will right click here, click on rename and I will just write the name as screw. Press enter. So here you have screw 1, screw 2 up to screw 7. Okay. Now, second, uh, the next solid that we have, these are my knobs. Okay, so I will select this. This is also my knob. So I will right click, go to rename bodies, and I will write here the name as knob. Then this is the handle that we have. So right click, click on rename handle. Yeah, then uh, these two components, they are actually our. They are my slider guides. Okay. So I will right click them, click on rename, and I will write here as slider guide. So 
click on OK. Scroll down. So now what we have, so this is actually our slider base. So right click here, rename. I will write it as slider base. Okay, and here now this one, this one is this is my spindle screw. So I will right click this, click on rename. I will rename it as spindle screw. And then this is my slider, right click, rename, slider, and here this is our base. Okay, so we have renamed all the components as per the assembly that is given to us. So with respect to this, we have just renamed it. Now what I will do, I will go to file, just close the design modeler. Okay. And let us come to the material properties that we need to add. So go to the next slide. So here you see there are there is a property of material that is given to us. And on the other side, you can see the different materials that are assigned to each and every component. Okay, so we are now going to understand how we can uh, you know ANSYS itself has its own material library. So we will see whether uh, we are getting the remaining materials like grey cast iron, stainless steel and mild steel etc inside the material library itself or not. And if it is there, how to bring it to the engineering data bank. Okay. So now what I am going to do, I am going to go to my engineering data, double click here, double click on the engineering data. By default we have structural steel, so we know we don't have to do anything here. Now if you look here at the extreme top, here we have engineering data sources which is uh, shown by a stack of book symbols. So just select this. And what I am going to do is, now here you see there are three different uh, row, uh, tables that we have. First is engineering data sources, second is outline of favorites, and third shows the material properties. Now in this engineering data sources, I will scroll down, I will go to general materials. Okay. And here what I will do, I will see whether I am having that material that I require in this uh, material library. So if you see under general materials, these are the standard materials that it has. So one thing which we require that is there is the grey cast iron, right. So now what I will do in order to bring it back to my engineering data. So under aside grey cast iron, you see a plus sign over it. So what it does, when you click on the plus sign, it will add grey cast iron to the engineering data. So I will just select the plus sign. Okay, so now if we scroll up, yeah, there you go. So if you see upside the plus sign, now it is having a book symbol. That means this grey cast iron has been added to the engine data. Then what we require is stainless steel. So again, I will select a plus sign. Okay, so stainless steel is also added. Now what is the other thing that we require? So we have added grey cast iron, stainless steel, now for mild steel. Now what you can observe here, you know, it does not have a mild steel material separately. So in ANSYS workbench, the default material library does not have a mild steel. Now what I am going to do is, I will create a new material library and inside that I am going to create uh, the material mild steel. Okay, so let us see how to do that. So to create a new material library, you have to go to engineering data sources, scroll down. Okay, what I will do, I will just write here as the name as new custom materials press enter it will ask me to save it so let me save it by the same name i will save it as material library name as new custom materials click on save now it is now if you come back to the outline of new custom materials asking me to add the material so i will write here the name as mild steel click on enter so what are the properties given to us, uh, density is given to us, ok so what I will do is, I will double click on density, so density is given to us as 7850, then what is the other properties, we are having the Young's modulus as well as the Poison Session. Now for Young's modulus, uh, what I have to do is select the mild steel again. And we will scroll down. 
under linear elastic we have something called as isotropic elasticity so double click on this now here you have the Young's modulus Young's modulus is given to us as 2.1 E11 so E11 basically that is how you write anything in ANSYS workbench uh, so for example in actually you read it as 2.1 into 10 raised to 11 so instead of writing 10 raised to 11 we write it as E11 ok so Young's modulus we are having here I will write here 2.1 E11 the Poisson's ratio given to us is 0.3 ok Again, select mild steel. We have also been given some strength properties, right? We have been given the tensile strength and the compressive yield strength. So I will scroll down. I will scroll down. Come to strength. Double click on tensile yield strength. This is given to us as 231.94 megapascal. So what I will do? I will change this unit first to megapascal and the value given to us is 231.94 so double click here I will write it as 231.94 then I will insert the compressive yield step change the unit from pascal to megapascal value given to us is 407.7 407.7 Okay, so we have created this new material library. Now, why we have created a new material library? It's the reason is that if at all you are going to use mild steel for any other uh, analysis, uh, you know, in your ANSYS. So, if you have created a material library of mild steel, then you don't have to create it again and again. So, that's the advantage of creating a material library. Now, what I will do, I will just select now right now it's in edit mode how do I understand it if you come to engineering data sources this is a new material library that I have created so I will just uncheck this editing mode it is asking me do you need the need to save the modifications when in the library I will say yes okay so all the things are saved now what I have to do I have to click on this plus sign so that this mile still gets added to the engineering data sources so now I will select this again you have this tag of book symbols okay now what you have to do you have to select engineering data sources so it will show you all the materials that you added up so we have gray cast iron we have mild steel we have stainless steel and structural steel okay so now i just close this now we are going to go to the model cell double click on the model cell so it's in the model cell that you basically assign the materials to each and every components of your assembly. Okay. So let us see how uh, one can basically assign uh, materials to each and every components. So it will take some time for the uh, mechanical model cell to load. Yeah. So we have got it loaded. Uh, let me just uh, basically wait for some time. It's still reading it. Yes, so we have got it loaded. I'll just click on maximize button. Okay, so now uh, what we are going to do, we are going to expand the geometry cell. Now here, these are the different components we are having. I'll go back to the presentation. Now see, if you go for screw, is having the material stainless steel. So now this is how you know its advantages to rename the components in the design modeler. So now I hope so you are it's clear to you. So since we have renamed it, we can easily select this materials from here to here. So what I will do, I will select the first material screw one, press the shift key and press screw seven. So all the screws in between they get automatically selected. Now I will go to these details of multiple selection. Under this you have the material selection over here. So select on structural steel, you have an arrow popping up towards the end, select there and I will give the material stainless steel. See all the screws, they are now assigned the material as stainless steel, so you can see it here. Yes, now the next thing I am going to do is, 
we are having slider guide it is given as gray cast iron so now i will scroll so we have two slider guides select both the slider guides come to material under assignment select structural steel and select this arrow i will give it as gray cast iron so both these slider guides are given the material as gray cast iron then we have the base that is also made of gray cast iron scroll down this is my base come to assignment select the structural steel and make this as gray cast iron as well then what we have left so screw is there now slider is there slider is given as mild steel spindle screw is mild steel and handle is mild steel so we have the slider and we have the spindle screw and the handle so this i am selecting by control by keeping by pressing my control key in the keypad i am doing this multiple selections okay now come to assignments structural steel i will assign it as mild steel now we have not assigned the slider base the slider base that we had so slider base is this so automatically by default you know this slider base is basically assigned uh, the structural steel material so i am saying about this so this is our slider base so we are keeping it as a default that is structural steel so we are not assigning any yes uh, so after doing that what we are going to do is now we will just try to save this we will try to save the file so what i will do i will just uh, double click here and i will just uh, rename this as editing material okay and i will just click on this drop down arrow and click on update so that answers will just update this entire cell and once it's done we will save the project okay so that in future if you need to refer it you can refer it I'll just take few seconds to update the entire cell So I hope so it has been clear till here how you can add materials in material library and how you can basically uh, create a new material library. Okay, so now it is updated. You can see there are all the three cells are having a green check. Now what I will do, I will go to file, save as, desktop and I have made a material by the name adding material analysis. I write the same name as adding material. Now, why uh, you know I have made this folder for this thing is that you know ANSYS apart from the ANSYS file, it also saves many other supporting files too. So it's always said whenever you do anything in ANSYS, so make a separate folder of it and then save that entire file in that folder. Okay, so I hope so the video has been helpful to all of you in understanding the concepts of creating materials in ANSYS. So, if you do and uh, like the videos, uh, and please do like uh, my channel and subscribe it. Thank you.